All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Pertash here with Kaizen Crypto, bringing you guys another video. So I hope you guys are all doing well and that you are having a great day. Today is March 23rd of 2020. So in this video here today, we're gonna to be taking a look at how you can install the incentivized testnet version of Jormungandr. And I'm gonna show you a few different things that are gonna be different about this new version of the wallet. So if you guys do find some value from this video here today, and if you guys enjoy this type of content, be sure to smash that like button for me. It lets me know that you guys did find some value. And if you are new to the channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. I wanna keep you guys informed and up to date on everything related to Cardano and cryptocurrency. Click that notification bell so you can get notified when I post a new video. So to get things started, what we're gonna do is go ahead and download the incentivized testnet version of Jormungandr. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of how to do that. Now in this particular instance, I'm gonna be using a Mac. So you're gonna to want to go through the process for whichever operating system that you are using. Uh, there's gonna be a way to download the version for Linux or for Windows, whichever computer that you're running. In this case, we're on a Mac, so I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do that. Uh, what we're gonna do first, let's go ahead and go to the website to be able to download the wallet. Um, easy thing I like to do, just uh, Cardano Incentivized Testnet. and it's gonna pull up the staking.card. And this is where you're going to have all of the information related to Shelly Incentivized Testnet. Um, also, if you guys haven't been able to check out some of the information here, it's pretty cool. You can choose the option to delegate your stake. This is gonna give you the option to download the wallet. Uh, you can also go through the information here on running a stake pool. Uh, if you haven't got a chance to check out the rewards calculator, that's here as well. So lots of information on this website here. Definitely check it out if you haven't already checked it out. It goes more in depth um, as to what all this means as far as the Shelly incentivized testnet. But in this case, what we're gonna do, we need to download the version of Jormungandr and um, Daedalus for the incentivized testnet. So we're gonna choose delegate your stake. And then this gives you the option to download the version of Daedalus for the Shelly incentivized testnet. So you wanna choose the version of the operating system that you're running. In this case, I'm operating on a Mac, so when you click on it, it'll take you to the option to download it. Here we go. Okay, and you can pretty much just leave the file format like how it is. This is gonna be pretty much just the installer, and it's gonna download it as a package file. I'm gonna show you guys how to go ahead and install it on your computer. We're just gonna wait for it to download. I'll be back with you guys here in just one moment. Okay, so guys, once you have went ahead and downloaded the installer package, when you click on it, it's gonna give you the option to install the contents. So when you say, when you click on it, it's saying, welcome to installer. We're just gonna go through the prompts here. So click on continue. You can choose the destination where you'd like to save the contents. Install. Okay, you just need to enter your administrative password. Okay, so guys, we have went ahead and gone through the process of downloading the incentivized testnet version of Daedalus. Now we can see here it's on the desktop. We can see that down here at the bottom taskbar. So we're gonna click on the icon and that's gonna boot up the application. So what we're gonna be looking at here, this is going to be the setup process. So what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and fill out this information here. You can select your language. Uh, you can choose the number format, date format. Most of this is gonna be default, so you guys can leave it how it is, or if you wanna change it, it's totally up to you. You've got some options. Uh, in this case, for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna keep everything how it is. Let's click on continue. These are gonna be the terms of service. So if you guys wanna look through that, you're welcome to. Let's just do continue and click I understand. And what's gonna happen now is the node is gonna connect to the network. 
So once you have connected to the network, you're gonna have the option to uh, upload your balance snapshot wallet for the incentivized testnet. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. It's very straightforward. And then from there, we're gonna deep dive into some of the features that are different about this version of Daedalus. Okay, we're back. So after the wallet has successfully connected to the network, you're gonna be prompted with this screen here. Um, guys, it did take me quite a while for the wallet to connect to the network. If you do have to go through the process of closing out the application and reopening, I would try that. It did not work for me the first time around. It's okay, it's nothing to be concerned about. I would just go ahead and close the application and reopen it. Try that a couple times and see if that doesn't work for you. Um, but then after that has completed, once you're connected to the network, you're gonna have the option to create either a new rewards wallet or you can restore your wallet from your recovery phrase. So in this case here, we're gonna be choosing the option to restore from recovery phrase. So when you click on it, it's going to ask you what type of wallet that you'd like to restore from. So you can choose the type of wallet that you're restoring from. Nice thing about Daedalus is that you can restore your wallet even if you had a Yoroi wallet. And Yoroi is also the same thing, vice versa. So you can actually restore Daedalus um, on Yoroi. So pretty cool. In this case here, I've got a Daedalus wallet recovery phrase. So I'm gonna choose that option. And it's gonna ask you what kind of Daedalus wallet that you would like to restore. So now in this instance, I've got a uh, rewards wallet recovery phrase. So now if you have not already created a rewards wallet, if you just have your standard balance wallet, now that wallet is going to be what you have your mainnet ADA on. So that's your 12 word recovery phrase. That's what you would need to select. But if you have already started uh, staking on the incentivized testnet, if you've already created a rewards wallet, it's gonna be the 15 word recovery phrase. So that's what I'm gonna select here. I'm gonna do continue. I'm gonna go ahead and enter in that recovery phrase and I'll be back with you guys in just one second. So after you have entered in your recovery phrase, it'll ask you to name your wallet and choose your spending password. Now it's saying that the wallet has been restored. So that's it, you've successfully restored your wallet. Once you click on close, you're gonna see your balance and you're gonna have the option to start delegating or staking your ADA. So we're gonna be taking a look at that. I'm gonna give you guys some of my thoughts as to some of the different features here on the incentivized testnet version for Daedalus. So stay tuned. So after you have gone through the process of restoring your recovery phrase and you see that the balance for your rewards wallet has updated, this is going to be where you can find all the various stake pools to delegate to. So how I got to this screen here, so if we look at the left hand side, you can see this right here. It looks like a cluster of dots. Uh, that is what we refer to as the delegation center. And here we can see all the different stake pools that are listed within that tab. So this is gonna be where you wanna go to find the various stake pools that you're gonna be able to start delegating your ADA to start earning passive rewards. Um, so just a couple things, this is going to just show you uh, how I like to look at these different metrics. So most notably, we can see with this wallet, uh, the tiles are gonna be color-coded. So as we can see here, we've got these green tiles. Now what this indicates is that these stake pools have been assigned blocks and have been on, uh, on the network and up and available to be able to mine those blocks when they were assigned to them. So that's what these green tiles mean. It means that they have been able to produce blocks. And as we scroll down here, we can see that you can, you can tell also that the amount of stake that's delegated to these stake pools is much, much less than the pools at the top of the list here. And we can see it goes all the way down to where we see the red color. Um, now these uh, stake pools, they're dynamic. This changes all the time. So this is just to show you a visual representation. Please don't take any of this as financial advice. I'm not recommending a specific stake pool in this video. I encourage you guys to do as much research as you can. Go ahead and check out some of my videos talking about how you can go about choosing the best stake pool for you based on certain metrics. But that's what we're looking at here. You can see that these tiles are color coded and it goes according to the number of blocks that these stake pools have been able to produce. Uh, what we can see here as well, there's this little bar, and what this bar indicates is how saturated the stake pool is. So also very cool how it's been color-coded. As we can see, when the stake pool 
has a very low stake or a reasonable amount of stake being delegated, we can see that there's a green color. As we go into the higher amounts, we can see that the color indicator turns yellow. And in this instance, once the pool becomes oversaturated, the, the uh, color coded becomes red. So it's pretty cool. It's nice a visual representation just to be able to see what exactly these different metrics mean. Now let's take a look if we click on one of these tiles. Uh, I'm not going to pick any specific stake pool in particular. Um, I hope Rick doesn't mind. I'm going to go ahead and choose Digi. So if you guys haven't checked out Rick McCracken, go ahead and check him out. Digital Fortress is the name of his stake pool. But what we can see here, just using this as an example, this is not me trying to promote or shill or anything like that. I'm just showing you this for educational purposes. We can see here that when you click on the tile, there shows you these certain metrics. So saturation, again, that kind of ties into that little bar and how full it is based on the color. You can see the rank, the controlled stake, pool margin, cost per epoch, performance, and produced blocks. So let's go over all of these here just so you guys have a better understanding of what they mean. Uh, so rank is just going to be the rank from highest to lowest based on the number of total stake pools. Controlled stake is going to be the total amount of ADA that's being delegated to this particular stake pool. And controlled stake and saturation kind of go hand in hand. So a good easy way to be able to tell is just to make sure that the saturation point is not too, too much. So when the color starts getting yellow or red, that's when you know that the stake pool is in danger of becoming oversaturated. So pool margin, what the pool margin is, it's going to be a operational fee that the stake pool will charge for being online and maintaining the network. So now this is going to vary among the different stake pools. So you're going to have to do your own due diligence and decide what is going to be a reasonable number for you. The pool margin can change uh, with each respective stake pool. Cost per epoch is going to be kind of like a flat fee. You know, so the stake pool for every epoch, they can charge a flat fee for maintaining the network and for allowing you to delegate to their stake pool. Most often than not, I can see here that Digi is also doing this. There's a zero cost per epoch. Very nice to see that. It definitely does encourage the um, decentralization of the network. So very cool. Something to keep an eye on though. You want to look for that as well. And then performance, this is going to indicate how well the stake pool performs when it comes time to produce a block. So, you know, you want to pay attention to that. In this case, we're here in the green, 116%. That's pretty awesome. So we can see here that this stake pool is very reliable. When it comes to mining blocks, this stake pool performs very well. So those are just some things to look for when it comes time to choose which stake pool that you'd like to delegate to. Very easy to be able to choose a stake pool once you've decided, then you can just click on delegate to this pool. You'll be given the prompts to assign the amount of stake that you wish to that particular stake pool. I'm not gonna do that in this instance because I've already chosen the stake pool that I'm gonna be delegating to. But that's what you would want to do in the instance that you did want to delegate to any specific stake pool. Once you've done that, you'll be able to start earning passive ADA. And once you begin to earn passive ADA, you'll see your rewards here update in your rewards wallet balance. So that is going to be it for this video here today, guys. I definitely do hope that you enjoyed it and that you did find some value. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you did like it, go ahead and smash that like button for me. And if you all are new to the channel and if you want to stay updated with Cardano content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button on your way out. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, take care.